Welcome back everybody. Um, some of you keen-eyed viewers will be already noticing that this isn't an action video that was promised three, four, five weeks ago now. Um, some of you keen ride viewers will notice that this isn't even a Honda CB350. Um, I have been extremely busy on, on the next project. I promise you the action videos of the Honda will be coming. Um, I'm trying to actually beg, borrow or steal a GoPro or action cam or whatever at the moment from somewhere. Um, I may just have to bite the bullet and invest in one. Um, but yeah, it's also winter here in the UK so uh, a lot of rain. Um, a lot of cold, so I don't particularly want to be out riding all day. And, um, but I promise you they will be up as soon as I can get a camera in a, in a clear day. Um, but for now, I just wanted to introduce the next project. Um, this 1987 BMW R80-7. Um, I have just had the realisation that I'm going to have to change the name of the YouTube channel and change my intro videos and things like that. Um, but fine, fine. Um, with this build, I really want to kind of make a little mini series, do a couple of episodes on each stage. When when I was building the Honda, um, I didn't really document much. Um, the videos were almost an uh, afterthought. I was getting a lot of questions, a lot of interest, um, and I thought, okay, well, I can put put together a couple of videos um, uh, just to kind of help others building um, these types of machines and. Um, I was kind of overwhelmed with the the interest and the engagement. So thank you all for, for kind of subscribing and following and watching the videos. Um, hopefully with this one, it's going to be a lot more detailed um, and going to help a lot more in, in kind of each stage of the build. Um, so today I'm going to start with uh, the kind of design um, and the kind of design and planning phase of, of, of an EV conversion. Um, obviously specifically bikes but it, it does go down to cars and things like that as well it's it's all pretty much the same principle um and it all kind of leads back to that age old you can have um fast good uh and cheap pick two you can't have all three um with an ev conversion you're looking at um i mean it's never going to be cheap i can tell you that now um but you really have to kind of balance that range um and that performance um, kind of there's a scale of performance over here, range over here. The further away you get from kind of range, the more you go towards uh, sort of performance. The more you go towards like the more range you'll get, and so forth. So you've got to kind of pick and choose where you want your build to be on that scale. Um, the Honda was bu built purely for speed, um, so its range is only 50 miles, which is great for popping to the shops or nipping into town, a little bit of riding in the day, um, maybe even a short commute to work. But I, I can't go on a ride out with my mates on, on the weekend uh, on that, um, unless I'm going to be asking them to stop at McDonald's for four hours while I charge. Um, and then we go on and do another 50, 60 miles of riding. It's just not feasible. So with this build, I wanted to focus more on the range and less on the performance. So obviously I still need that performance. I need to be safe. I need to be able to pull away from traffic. Um, I need to be able to keep up with traffic and cars on, on the highway and on the motorway and A roads and things like that. Um, but I don't need to be doing not to 60 in under three seconds like the Honda does. Um, and I don't need to be doing not to 100 in kind of three and a half seconds, um, four seconds or whatever. So less focus on performance and more on range with this. Um, so that leads me on to the motor and kind of what motor I'm going to be using um, and why I've chosen that. So I've decided to go with a hub motor for this build. Um, only real reason is just to free up more battery space, free up all this kind of space here where a mid drive would usually sit um, and have that motor at the back uh, actually in the hub so that I've got more space for batteries. Um, the hub motors are great for this. They do add a lot of unsprung weight, so they're not going to be any good for kind of off-road bikes, uh, trials bikes, things like that. For things like that, you really want a mid mid drive motor. And um, the same with kind of very high performance applications. If you're looking for kind of very high top speed or very um, fast acceleration, you probably want to look at the more powerful. Um, mid-range motors there as well over the hub motor but for a just kind of daily uh, cruiser um, road bike a hub motor is brilliant it's a really good choice um, 
uh, so I've gone with the QS273, I think it was. Uh, it's a spoked motor. Um, it's eight kilo, It's rated at eight kilowatts continuous. Um, however, QS are one of the rare companies that kind of underrate their motors. Um, most companies will say, oh yeah, 10, 10 kilowatts. And in reality, it gets warm or it's kind of at its max or its peak there. Um, whereas QS is, people have been using these um, kind of eight kilowatt motors, pushing them to 12, 15 kilowatts continuously and using them and getting some good mileage out of them and they haven't had any issues. So I'm hoping that I can get the 8000 QS uh, 273 um, and I'm going to try and run it at about 15 kilowatts with some minor modifications um, some cooling, ferro fluids, things like that. Um, but I'm going to have to kind of test that out and do some experiments with that and see see how I get on. But yeah, hopefully we're looking at 10 to 15 kilowatts somewhere around there, which should be plenty um, for um, kind of speeds of about 120 kilometers an hour top top speed um, and an acceleration of kind of not 60 in four or five seconds still. Um, in terms of kind of batteries and things like that, so one of the things that I really want to do with this bike is, is kind of highlight um, that we can get these electric bikes looking as beautiful as, as the old classics and being able to convert these bikes while still keeping the original charm. Um, I know a lot of kind of pure petrol heads and um, especially people into classic motorcycles are very against what I'm doing. Um, and I'm well aware, and I, I still own petrol bikes myself. I still love riding a petrol bike, um, but this is this is just kind of a, a hobby and a passion for me, and something I enjoy doing in my spare time. Um, and yeah, I wanna I wanna show that I can almost I can build an electric motorcycle that is as beautiful as um, the the old classics, um, but with a lot less kind of hassle of of owning um, an, a classic motorcycle. Um, so with this, I want I want the aesthetics kind of really spot on. I want a really, really clean build. I want it to almost look original. Um, I know the Honda kind of keeps a lot of original features. This is going to go one step further towards the extreme. Um, with the old Airhead um, motors, I think it's just a beautiful design. The kind of air cooled, um, the cylinders out the side, the boxer style. I, I think it's a gorgeous engine and I don't want to lose that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to 3D scan um, the original motor from this bike, which is unfortunately just junk. It's got a crack cylinder head and it's been filled with water for many, many years. So uh, I may try and rebuild it at some point, but um, for now it can sit in the corner of the, the very tidy workshop. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to 3D scan this, um, which I've already started working on. Um, I will clean, I'll show you some of the um, kind of mock-ups that I've got here. Um, as you can see, it's all, this is just kind of in, in raw stages. Um, and what I'll be doing is cleaning this up a lot, taking off the exhaust ports, taking off that uh, clutch lever cable, um, the actual... Um, clutch shifter itself, things like that, making the engine a lot cleaner, smoother, and then I will be 3D printing this and uh, out of carbon fiber resin and using this as the battery box. So we are gonna be looking at probably reusing some EV um, battery cells in this build. Um, in the Honda, I used uh, 18650 Sony VTC 6 cells, which are a fantastic cell, um, but they are very expensive um, and it is very, very time consuming. Um, the spot welding 440 cells together, especially when we're running at such kind of high. Um, I mean, that, that thing's capable of pulling, I think it's 650 amps or so. So when we're kind of pulling that, um, those kind of currents, the connections need to be, uh, you can't just use that nickel strip. Um, that is a uh, nickel and copper kind of layer with individual fuses. So just kind of the, the process of putting that pack together is, is weeks of work. Um, I want to do this on a, a bit quicker, um, have it ready within the next kind of couple of months or so. So I've been looking at either BMW i3 um, cells, 
Um, been looking at the i8 cells. I had a look at Nissan Leaf cells and I've decided against those. Um, they're a great cell, but they're just too big and I'm not going to be able to keep the shapes that I want. Um, the, the kind of forerunner at the moment is the Mitsubishi Outlander cells. Um, they're, they're surprisingly cheap um, compared to other EV cells. I think to build a 72 volt, uh, 1800 amp hour pack or so, is, is it's only going to cost about 600 pounds. Whereas with the i3 94 hour amp hour um, pack, you're looking at kind of 1000 pounds plus. So um, they're definitely a strong contender at the moment. They seem to perform well. They seem to be a good size, although they're only 40 amp hours each. I'm going to have to do uh, kind of um, double that to 80 amp hours. Um, so having 40 cells rather than the 20 to get up to 72 volts. Um, but hopefully having small, more smaller cells means I can adapt the shape better to have it all fit into that um, the original engine sized kind of battery case. Um, so yeah, they, they are probably looking like the strongest contender. I'll probably pick up a couple of test cells um, when I can and, and kind of do some do some tests on them, funny enough, um, and, and see how they're going to perform. Um, but yeah, so in terms of kind of range with an 80 amp hour pack, we're looking at about 80 miles, which isn't a huge improvement uh, on the Honda 60. Um, so ideally, I'm looking for 100 miles plus. Um, done some calculations and I'm going to need just over 100 watt hours per mile on this bike with the weight. Um, I think originally this bike weighed 215 kilograms um, so it's a fairly heavy bike but a lot of that is in the motor um, so by stripping that motor out we should actually be saving a ton of weight. I, I can't I, I don't know what exactly what the frame is alone but uh, I can lift this fairly easily just the chassis so I can't imagine this more than uh, 60, 70 kgs as it as it stands now. No, I'd, I'd say that's even way too much. Uh, I don't know. I'll find out. Um, I'll, I'll chuck some text in below and tell you how much this thing weighs at the moment dry without any uh, batteries or motor or anything in. Um, but yeah, it, it, it shouldn't be too much heavier than the Honda when finished, um, aside from the battery weight. Um, so... I'm looking for about 100 amp hours, how I actually kind of come to that, whether I use 100 amp hour cells, um, prismatic cells, or whether I use kind of three banks of uh, 40, 40 amp hour um, Mitsubishi cells or whatever, that's still to decide. Um, but yeah, really just looking at the sizing things and kind of working all that out at the moment. But I know I need around 100 amp hours. Um, really kind of basic rule of thumb is, um, is going to be an amp hour per 10 miles so the honda is 66 amp hours and it will do around 60 miles or so so it's a kind of very very rough basic um rule of thumb that can give you an idea of, of what kind of amp hours you need to be looking at for a kind of small to medium sized motorcycle um obviously rider weight aerodynamics and things like that do play a part in that um but yeah Roughly, that will give you a good idea of, of what you need. Um, in terms of controller for this build, so I'm trying to get my hands on. There's a there's a guy in India, very talented um, chap called uh, Haki Babel, um, who's producing a um, controller that's capable. Of, I think it's about 600 amp, um, and it looks very solid. And um, he's he's built some prototypes. And the price point is is around six hundred dollars, which is incredible value for money. So I'm going to try and get my hands on um, one of his units and see if I can test that out. Um, if not, I'm going to look at the far drive units. They seem to be getting some good press at the moment. Um, they seem to be fairly easy to set up. They seem to be fairly powerful and, and fairly reliable. So, and they're again they're they're fairly good value for money. I think uh, for 400 amp version comes in at about 500 pounds so not as good value um but um still still a strong contender so i'll probably be using one of those um realistically that's going to be in the tank um i would have loved to put in one of the um the kind of the one of the side of the airhead motor and have that in the um in where the kind of cylinder head and uh, piston comes at the moment because it would be great for cooling 
Um, but I think I'm just going to need all the battery space I can get in there. So it's likely the controller is likely going to go in the tank. And thankfully, this tank is huge, so I shouldn't have any fitment issues like I did on the Honda. And the uh, the controller should fit really nicely in here, with plenty more space for um, 12 volt system contactor and things like that. Um, this this tank is huge. Um, I think in terms of kind of when you're looking at build as well as look at the kind of challenges of the specific bike and kind of ideas that you have and how's that going to work. Um, I already know from this bike the biggest fabrication um, challenge for me is going to be the final drive. This was a um, direct, direct drive bike so um, gearbox drive um, to a, um, a drive shaft um, and then have the final kind of drive ratios in here. Um, this is going to be the biggest issue, having the hub motor on and how this is going to all fit together. I'm likely going to have to do a lot of machining of the final drive to keep that looking um, very original, um, but also being functional and not interfering there. Um, but yeah, as soon as the QS motor turns up and I get that all spoked up, um, I'll, I'll be definitely be doing a video and kind of fabricating and fitting a hub motor. Um, one other thing I'd love with this build is um, keep it super clean. I don't want any wires showing. I don't literally nothing. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to achieve that, but with the hub motor, I've um, already hollowed out all the final drives. So I've taken all the gears um, ratios and things like that out of the final drive unit. And so there's a nice kind of channel leading up the swing arm to here where the um, where the motor um, the gearbox would usually attach and um, so having that hollow battery storage um, coming through and can run all the engine cables um, motor cables sorry motor cables through there um, I don't want any wiring on the handlebars I don't want anything I want it to be a super super clean build I want it to look all OEM aside from the fact that it will not have exhausts um, and it will have kind of um, airbox and things like that and pipes and things um sensors gear shifts and stuff um other than that it'll look super smooth um and super super clean um i'm also the, one of the challenges is um the rear brake on this obviously being a kind of a direct drive bright uh, bike and originally having a hub on the rear um that's a massive challenge and the way I've overcome this is I'm not going to have a rear brake. Um, there's this kind of twin disc set up at the front, um, which is the OEM, which I'm going to rebuild the calipers on and see how they do. Um, but with a hub motor, you've got a fair bit of um, control over how much kind of brake regen you have. Um, certainly with the Honda when I was setting that up, it, it would have been fine without a rear brake if I'd have chucked the regen up a bit. Um, it does make it a little bit unstable on kind of gravel roads and things like that, and you just have to be quite wary of that. Um, but I think I should get away with without having a rear brake on this one. Um, but I may I may change my mind in the future and may have to set up a kind of disc on the rear um, somehow, but it kind of takes away from having a super, super clean sleek bike. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the kind of design episode um, and kind of what I'm going to be doing on this build. Um, as I said, I will be kind of trying to do these more regularly and as I go. So hopefully kind of get, get an episode out every other week or so um, and have much more in-depth videos about like actually building the pack. Um, 3D printing um, some of the components that I'm going to be using and um, setting up the controller, fitting the rear hub and things like that. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Um, it helps me out a lot, gives me motivation to keep doing these videos. Um, let's, let's me know that you care. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Um, and yeah, those um, action videos, uh, I promise they will be up at some point as soon as I get myself a GoPro. Cheers everyone.